In this video, we're going to use our web form to select multiple rows from a MySQL database. So if you look at our web form here, we have a minimum price and we have a maximum price. So we want to select items that are greater than or equal to our minimum price, yet less than or equal to our maximum price. So if I hit browse, this should filter out all the different products. As we see, we get the three products back that are between our minimum and our maximum. If we go over to our workbench, as you can see here, we didn't pull in the more expensive stuff. And we didn't pull in the less expensive stuff. It's set by our, our filter. And we could change, and we can change this to whatever we want it to be. So anyway, let's take a look at our Golang code. So we have our product struct. And we have our three different fields, or four different fields, as you can see. We have our ID, name, price, and description. And we covered our connection to the database in a previous video, but it returns our pointer to our SQL dot, uh, our SQL dot DB. And since it has a close, we've got to make sure we close that. And the path we were at was at slash product search, which is handled by the product search handler. If we go down to that, as you can see here, we're checking our request and we're seeing if the method was a get. And if it wasn't a get, if it was a post like from our form, we want to run the rest of the code down to the end of this function. But if it is a get, we're just going to go ahead and uh, use, uh, use our template you know, and use our product search.html file. And of course we're passing nothing in. So if it's coming from the browser, this is a git request, so we didn't pass in that extra information. But if we uh, hit the submit button on our form, well that's going to be test uh, post method and we're going to run the other section of that handler. So if it's post, we want to go ahead and still parse our form. Uh, we're going to use the form value method on our request to go ahead and grab it. And that key string that we're grabbing is, of course, the name attribute on, on the inputs of our form. So, for instance, this input, you know, that was the min price name. So that's how we're grabbing the value of this particular input and differentiating it from the value of this particular input, which was max price form, and this one was min price form. Now, this is just a string that we're calling statement. This is not a SQL.statement data type. This is just a string type. And we will use it here in just a second. So, like I said, we want to return multiple rows, or possibly multiple rows. So, we want to use db.query. So, if I go back. Back here, I got several different methods. I have query row, but this only returns one row. So I want to return multiple rows. So here I go, uh, db.query method. So, like I said earlier, just make sure you look at what it's returning to kind of give you a clue of which one to use. Uh, returning one row, uh, that makes sense if I only want to return one particular row, say if I'm searching by a uh, primary key or some kind of unique uh, column. And if I want to return multiple rows like this, I want to use db.quarry. And if I have something, say, that doesn't return a row, say I'm updating, deleting, you know, you know, inserting, I would want to use the prepare statement to create a statement and then the statement we can use to execute later. Anyway, let's go back to our code. We'll cover the prepare statement here a little bit later in the video. And we have rows.close. So, um, SQL.row doesn't have a close method. It closes it for us. So let's just take a look at that. Okay, rows. We have all these different methods here, and we do have a rows.close method. So we need to make sure that we run that to free up those resources. Otherwise, we'll eventually uh, we'll run out of uh, connections. Anyways, you can see here type row. It just has error and scan. Um, it's closing 
that connection for us when it's done. It's not keeping it open. And we're making a variable products, which is just a slice of product. It's a slice of that product struct that we had defined towards the top of our code. Now, Rose has this method next, which is going to return true and just iterate through. So that bool, um, like you would expect with all four statements, we're going to, you know, we need to know true. I want you to continue the for loop. False, I want you to stop. So if it has another row, it's going to go ahead and keep going until it runs out of rows. So if we, we returned three rows off our first search, so this would run three different times. Um, creating our variable p, which is just of type product. And then we're going to go ahead and on that rows, depending on which row it's on, the first time through, it'll be on the first row, second time, second and third, and so on. And then it of course, there's no fourth on our first search, so it would just return false, and then this would be done running. But anyway, if you're on the first row, and it's, it's going to iterate through in each one of those. So for the first one, it's going to look at the first row, and we're going to scan that. And we want to scan those to a destination, so we need a memory address. And that's going to be the memory address for the first one is going to be the ID uh, field on our struct you know, our product struct variable, which is P. So one thing to be aware of, as many uh, columns you have on the rows that you're returning, when you scan them, you need to have as many arguments in here, or else you're going to run into an error. Since we have four columns, I have four uh, arguments as well. Let's say if I had deleted this one and only had three arguments, well, that's going to go ahead and cause an error. And speaking of errors, we're going to check and see if it's not nil. If it isn't nil and we do have an error, we're going to go ahead and panic. And then uh, finally, we're going to take our slice of, remember, products is a slice of product and we want to append onto it. So we want to take what we already have uh, in our, our product slice and we want to append P which we had just scanned those field, uh, those values onto. So we're gonna run this for each row that we have, and we're just gonna continually keep appending more products onto our products slice. And finally, we're gonna go ahead and execute our template, our product search.html, with our products uh, being passed in as our argument. So, or getting passed in. If we look at product search.html, um, of course the form always renders, but this if statement here, it's looking for a true or a false, basically. Um, if we're not passing anything in when we're executing our template, that's going to be nil, equate to false. So that means the first time when we're just going from our get method from the browser, you know, that's equating to false. So none of this gets, you know, none of this gets uh, gets rendered. But when we pull information from our database and we pass in our slice of products, yes, that is something that does hold a value. This equates to true, and we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and parse this section. Anyway, so range is going to range through everything in our slice. So this dot right here is our slice of products. We're going to range through each one of those. So the first time we return three things it went ahead and for each one of those things, it went ahead and parsed this information. So, you know, for the first one, we got our ID, name, price, and description, as you can see here. And of course, our break was, our break was right there. And if we go back. So, that is one way to do it is to use the db.query to do this. Um, another way is to use the prepare statement. So on this one, you know, to return our rows, we were using db.query. But we could actually use the db.prepare to prepare our statement. And so I have a second path here at product search2, and it has the product search2 handler. 
So if I go here and I go ahead and search, I'm going to get the same thing. We're just doing this a different way. So I just want you to be aware of, of the prepare statement. So db.prepare is going to return a statement, an SQL, or a pointer to SQL.statement data type. And if we go down here, it has many different methods. Notice it does have a close method, so make sure you use defer, you know, statement.close, you know, to make sure we free up those resources. Um, you still have query row if you want to return one row. Like I said, look at what these return. Uh, this one's is just a row, so if I want to get one row, that's what I want. If I want to return multiple rows, I want, you know, statement.query. Or if I want to say insert, delete, update, whatever, you know, where I don't need to return, I don't want to return a row, I just want to know a result, you know, I would use uh, statement dot execute. Um, anyway, let's get back to our code. So, like I said, this handler is going to be product search handler 2. So let's go down to that. And just like before, we were checking to see if it's a get or a post. Assume um, this template looks the same anyway, just a different name. And we're, of course, going to parse the form, grab our values, all the same. Now, we get down to db.prepare. It just takes a query string. So we're going to go ahead and hand it that query string. And it's going to return a pointer to sql.statement data type and an error. We'll check to see if that error is if there is an error we're going to go ahead and panic um, so we're going to be saving this into our statement struct and like i said it has a close method so we want to make sure that we close that so defer.close it'll close at the end of this function and then if we get down here we're going to use statement.query remember statement.query row returns one row statement.query returns multiple rows is what we want and if, say, we're inserting, we use, you know, statement.execute. And I can change the name of this. Um, maybe I put, should change it to select or something. So we know in our heads, like, hey, this is a select uh, statement we have uh, prepared here. But anyway, notice it just takes arguments. We don't have to hand it um, a statement like db.query takes a statement and then it's arguments. This one just takes the arguments because we already saved that in to our SQL.statement data type, our statement variable here, by using db.prepare up here. So anyway, it just takes those two arguments. And being we have two question marks, we want to make sure we pass in two arguments like we do here. So we have our min and our max. Of course, we have our products, uh, our product slice of products. And being that this returns rows just like the previous one, it's going to work in the same way. Uh, we're going to take our rows.next. If we have another, you know, as long as it's not empty, it's going to keep returning true. So we'll run through every single row. For each one of those rows, we want to go ahead and scan them and scan each field, you know, to our variable P. And then when that's done, we want, in each one of those, we want to go ahead and keep appending that product to our products variable, which again is just a slice of product. It's that slice of that product struct that we have. Um, anyway, and then we're going to use our product search to the HTML. This looks the same as this one. Just one little difference here. I want to make sure I'm running that different handler. So I gave it a slightly different path to run on post. So it's product search to, you know, with, with the method post. Anyway. And, of course, we're passing in our products just like before. And we get our result, you know, at product search two, you know, via the post method, we get the same thing. Um, one thing to look at on, on the statement, when trying to figure out what to use, um, you're going to use, you're going to prepare a statement for some of your stuff that aren't regular select uh, statements. Um, it might just be easier if you're new to this, just, you know, preparing statements for all of them because I mean, you can use you can select a single row, multiple rows, you can do all kinds of stuff where you just want to know a result. Um, that might be kind of simpler than using db.query or query row, but then for some other statements, you know, creating a statement with your prepared statement and then, you know, still using this anyway. But
But anyway, um, so in short, you know, we're, you know, at, with our particular handler, you know, we're just grabbing our values from the form. We're preparing our statement. We're taking the SQL dot statement, you know, making sure we're freeing up those resources later, you know, and then we're running that query method on it. Just takes our two arguments or our two different question marks. And then we're going to take our rows and run rows.next to loop through that entire thing and eventually append each one of those scan, pro scan products uh, onto our product slice and then pass that into our template when we execute it. So, um, hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them below. But I'll see you in the next one.